the worst action in any of the movies. The, the choreography right. was maybe like the, the worst. The, the execution. Right right compared to the other ones, the, two seconds. I was expecting from his buddies get the thrash. precision. I felt like was, he brings up a fish or like starts to like or something. It wasn't perfect. I'll see how that's going. I, I never knew why they did that. <laughs> I, I never knew until I was thinking this through, and I'm like, "How are we gonna do this with two phones?" Well, we'll figure that. it out. It will. It will go exactly how it goes, and that'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we want to talk about John Wick. I upset you greatly by saying that I didn't like it as much as literally everybody else on the planet did, apparently. But right. let me tell you something about my viewing experience that made shape <laughs> that. Okay, all right. So we go, me and Nicole went to go see it. We're sitting, we're sat in the second to last row, almost like nobody in the theater. Every row of people has like one group in it, like all the way down. Right. Nobody behind us. There's nobody in front of us. We're like, oh, sweet. This is going to be great. Like a couple of beers and we'll watch this fun action movie. I'm down. Right. As we're going, as we're getting into it, Trailer start, you know, trailers in, we're getting the first scene, a group of guys starts coming in. I was like, all right, fine, whatever, you know, this is a bro movie, it's a couple of dudes, but they're all double fisting beers. Every single one of them coming in is double fisting. Good. Beer. Good. So it's off to a strong start, and it ends up, by the time everybody's there, it's six people sat right in front of us. A little bit lower, drop down level of the theater in front of us. Right. So we're like, okay, like it's fine, like they're being a little rowdy or whatever, we're like, they'll calm down. When I tell you, these, these six young gentlemen did not stop talking for the duration of that three hour long movie. They did not stop at the behest of everybody involved. They, I, I talked to them one, I talked to one guy that was closest, like most of the group, there's three people kind of in front of us and then three like down further away that we didn't really interact with much, but we're still very audible. I want to make that perfectly clear. Right. But the guys in front of us were drunk, they were loud the whole time, just yelling, standing up in front of the screen, flipping each other off. Groups constantly arguing back and forth about which side of the group was being too loud. It was just, it was bedlam. Pandemonium. <laughs> Cats and dogs, as <laughs> mass hysteria. <laughs> but, so eventually like, one of the guys stood up, Nicole was going to the bathroom, stood up and he looked at me and was like, oh, hey man, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, dude, we're just, we're loud. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, man. Let's just, you know, let's bring it down a little bit, huh? He's like, yeah, sorry, but we'll, 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 we got gotcha. you. I was like, all right, cool. Like, they were loud the whole time he was gone. He came back. They kept going. We're our only break, our only respite from this nonsense was the action scenes because it was it was the only thing with the music and everything was loud enough that like they couldn't distract you. So right. I got to watch all the action scenes and intermittently some dialogue <laughs> throughout the movie. <laughs> But it keeps going. We're about we're two hours in at this point. They're still talking. I I just I'll be the first to admit I maybe let John Wick get to me a little bit. I was a little fired up. Dude. I was like, sure, yeah. I was like, all right, let's like I'm gonna say something. I just I've got to say something again. So I stood up from my chair, grabbed the two guys' seats in front of me, and pulled them back until the plastic started to squeak <laughs> in their chairs and leaned way over their seats. I said, hey, keep it down. <laughs> the guys were like, it's, it's guy time. <laughs> it's guy time right now. We're having guy time. I was like, yeah, I get that. I was like, I understand. You're trying to watch the movie. I'm trying to watch the movie. I can't. So lower it. And the guy was like, they kind of were like, well, oh, all right. All right, we'll try. We'll try to keep it down a little bit more. I didn't find whatever. Like that's the last time I'm talking to him. Like I'm not. I'm not dealing with it anymore. Nicole goes and gets somebody. Two other women in the theater also went to complain to the, to the manager or the staff or whoever, which were two. Not to be disparaging or anything, but two little women. Take it easy, man. <laughs> who were not going to stop six full-grown <laughs> dudes of varying ages and inebriation levels. Right. So they never even came in. They never even talked to him. Another like get, like another twenty minutes goes by. Another guy, a couple rows down, like well away from these guys, turns around and is like, "Shut the f up!" <laughs> <laughs> they were joking out. They laughed. Where they didn't care. They, the entirety of the movie, they did not stop talking, being rowdy, getting up and down, running around, doing stupid shit. Like, the youngest one was thirty. 
It was like 30 to 50. It was insufferable. I was seething with rage the entirety of that film. So that might, that might color my uh, enjoyment of that movie a little bit. What'd you think I, of it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have rather had five babies in a theater mm -hmm. than those adult men just sitting and screaming yeah. in front of you. That, okay, well, we had two very different experiences going to see this movie. So I, I went to go see this twice. Okay. I went to go see it once in IMAX, like opening day. And then I went the very following week because I loved it so much. I wanted to go see it again. I saw it in mm. IMAX both times with, mind you, fully quiet theaters. So that probably helped my mm -hmm. enjoyment of the movie. There was no one screaming in front of me. There was no one yelling. But I saw the movie twice and I absolutely loved it. Besides the unfortunate theatrical experience you experienced that may or may not have affected your experience, enjoyment experience. of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What, what were your thoughts on this movie? Why, just, yeah, what were your thoughts on the movie? I want to I I get to that first. Let me, let me start off by saying that this is the worst action in any of the movies. <laughs> okay, good, okay, all right. Not, not the worst, but like the, sure the choreography okay. sure was maybe the worst, the execution of it. And I'm not talking about John Wick himself. I'm not talking about sure, sure. everybody's favorite action star. Right, did you know he's a nice guy? I, really? I haven't... Supposedly very friendly. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Was he on Epstein's <laughs> planes at all? Did he go down there yet? Did he go that one yet? <laughs> don't, get, don't get political, man. Come on. <laughs> um, no, like, and it's, it's incredible that Keanu's still doing this. For sure. At, at what, 60 something? Like, almost 60? He, he may isn't 60? be 60 now. He may be 60. Like, it's incredible now. that he's still doing this. And he's given it, he's clearly going all in on, on all these, like, extended, long-form fight scenes. That are, are great, but I more like pulled punches, like waiting. He's 58, by the way. He's 58. All right. Well, it's still uh, an incredible, like, go of it. Like, the guy really went all out for it. That's commendable. But he wasn't necessarily the problem. He's a little slower. That's fine. Right. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all it, when it gets into a fight with multiple people at a time, the, 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 the seams become very evident. And you can see the other people almost standing still and waiting a lot more than I feel like you could in the other ones. Like I watched a couple of times guys like bring a gun up or raise a fist and then put it back down before he even got to them, like in the background. Right. Like the, the next guy, he was getting ready to get punched in two seconds. He could see it coming. His buddy's getting thrashed. And he brings up a fist or like starts a kick or something and then just relaxes because he was a little early. On, that happened a lot, especially in the the Kyoto um, Continental okay. fight. Yeah, that yeah, whole yeah. scene that was the worst right. offender. When he's one on one with somebody, it was fine. It was seamless. It was really fun action, really creative stuff. Like I liked it, but that okay. that was probably my biggest gripe. Was like was that my second gripe? Biggest one. There's other little things, but like the sure, two biggest sure. things that kind of took me out of it. And I know there's stats. Everybody saw like this stuff, but like I think I think he maybe forgot how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think Keanu Reeves has has been stunted in some way. He suffered a massive head trauma from doing all his own stunts and is now reduced to guttural, guttural moans and like two word broken sentences. I don't know what happened to him. He was never that talkative. Then this one, it was really like like dry like drive levels of just like someone asking him a question and him just yeah. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> no, you're a hundred percent right. I, I while I, I disagree with so like I saw that as a feature of this movie, and I'll get into that more in a second, but you're you're definitely right. Having just watched John Wick three, like just the other night, just finished watching that, he has definitely he he speaks the least of any of the movies in four. And it he definitely has that drive autistic thing going on in this movie more. <laughs> He definitely has that going on more in this movie. But to me, personally, I, I loved that. I really, really liked that in this movie. I feel, I, feel like, I feel like everybody's talking about the action of Keanu, but honestly, I think his acting in this was perfect. Like, genuinely, like, I, I don't think he could have done better in this because it was exactly what this movie needed. I feel like 
he only said 10 lines, like you said, <laughs> in the whole movie. He only said a few lines. But when he did, the whole theater would, like, uproar. Like, when he would just, like, like, the third time he just said, yeah. That, everybody was just race. everybody in the theater was just like yeah that's awesome i love that <laughs> and then at the end spoilers when he's you know talking about you know i want loving husband on my on my okay that, that got me that that's got what me i'm saying bit. it's like he says so little but it's so intentional because like when you see like keanu in other movies or in interviews he's such a almost a bubbly he's very jovial very fun, very jovial yeah. very fun and so when i see this movie and how reserved and how precise he is with what he says i see it as a feature and i almost i love the fact that he's saying less and when i go back and watch the other john wick films i honestly feel like he's talking too much because i feel like he talks through his actions through the action through the fighting through his just really i i do yeah i think and so like when this movie like i loved the fact that he wasn't talking that much i really enjoyed it i felt like it just he didn't need to say anything there were moments where i would expect him to say something and then he didn't <laughs> but i would be like you know what i'm okay with that like i kind of like that i kind of like that he just wasn't saying much but i understand you not enjoying that i totally get that and like i think it was just for me colored by like the in comparison to the other ones, I love the fighting, obviously. Everybody loves the sure, action. And the sure, yeah, I yeah. think compared to the other ones, I, just, I was expecting a little bit more. Not that they weren't big and grandiose, right. but like the precision I felt like was... It felt rushed, almost. Like some of the fight scenes, like it wasn't perfect like it used yeah. to be. Like, the, like I said, like the little seams, people waiting in the back for way longer than you think they would. Like right. not giving the other stunt actors something to do while they're you know, recovering for a hit or waiting for you know, their next beating to come around. Right. They, it, a lot of, like, I watched a guy, like, a full just, like, gear up, like, stop for a punch, and he saw, the stunt actor saw Keanu turn to fight someone else and just punch to it, like, hard to his left. <laughs> like, didn't even, like, that punch was never going to land. It was not dodged. Keanu didn't see it. It could have taken him out right there. Like, it's just little things like that was, like, I was picking up on it a lot more sure. than I had in the previous ones, and that kind of, I was like, maybe this isn't as polished. As the other one, so maybe I didn't feel that it was as intentional, like those real crazy pauses and like his real lack of dialogue and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. And I, I'm so, I'm so like when you first told me you didn't like this movie, like I was felt so alarmed because I felt <laughs> like I was just wondering. I was like, what did I miss? Like, what did myself and the rest of the world miss here? Because I feel I just loved this movie the first time, but the reason I went to go see it again is because I. I was like, okay, everybody loves this movie, and I love this movie. I want to hate it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to find something in here. <laughs> exactly. But I, I had to see, I'm like, okay, am I, is it just the blinders of a first watch? Is it the blinders of, I saw this in best possible conditions with you know no one screaming around me. I was in IMAX. I was in a good situation. Did that affect my watch? But on a second time... You know, when you watch a movie for the second time, like, you're watching it differently. You're, you know what's going to happen, so mm. you're kind of, you're, you're... You get to sit in the moment and, like, really observe what you're seeing. Exactly. Yeah. And I didn't notice any of those things. I didn't notice any of the fighting issues you were talking about. But what I did notice, I did notice that in John Wick 3, when I was watching John Wick 3 the other day. I definitely did notice that, like, the third act of that movie really started to kind of fall off, and he was getting very, very slow. Granted, that was probably a story thing, because he was tired because mm -hmm. like all of these movies happen within the span of a couple weeks yeah so, I know, he was, crazy. <laughs> so it's fine he's probably getting tired but i did notice it in that movie i did notice the punches starting to get pulled some all the things you're describing but i just did not notice that in this movie and I, it could be the fact that i just was not looking for it but it at least didn't stand out to me as a glaring issue you know what i would i think they do if we do another kind of John Wick, we do spinoffs or prequels or anything like that in the, in the future. Yeah. I have a couple of thoughts on that. I had a stupid idea the other day, <laughs> or earlier today. But I think my less stupid idea is for all the fight scenes, you get Tobey Maguire in. Hear me out. Wait a second. You get Tobey Maguire in as John Wick's stunt double. Right. People <laughs> hate him. You know, all the stories <laughs> and Spider-Man of them paying the guy who played flat. Oh God, what's his name? Joe Manganiello. Yeah, Joe Man Manganiello. Like, Manganiello. Yeah, like paying him to like beat him up and like all this stuff about like all the, you know, the rigs not being done right for him and him getting injured all the time on right. set because they just 
hated his guts. <laughs> I think if you don't want the stunt people pulling punches anymore, you don't get someone as likable as Keanu. That's smart. You get Toby in there and let him go to town on him. <laughs> He's just complaining about all the money he lost gambling the other night. He's just upset. Everybody's like, God, this guy needs a punch in the face. No, I like it. That's, a, that's, a, that's interesting. That's a clever idea. I like that. <laughs> all right. Smaller gripe. Yeah. And we'll get to the stuff we loved about it here in a minute. I just want to get like, right. we'll get the gripes out first and then we'll go to the stuff. Because I do have plenty of positive stuff to say about it. Sure. But um, there's that, that fan theory or like that thing floating around that all the pedestrians – in the John Wick universe are either not real or this is like a matrix style simulate. They don't exist. They're not real because nobody, this is the most outrageous example of that. And the other ones you could have maybe gotten away with it is New York. People just driving fast cars, couple gunshots go off. Like right. mostly in like houses or in like the continental or like whatever it's happening kind of where it should be happening. There is so much public violence to an extreme and nobody even bats an eye stops their car that, okay <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that i love that scene the parts of it i like sure more people get hit by the by cars in this movie than it, all the other ones combined it is uh, outrageous the uh, the amount of motor vehicle harm that is done in this right but that scene goes on for, it feels like 15 minutes. It, that is a very long scene. It goes on for some, which is fine. Like I like the extended, you know, fewer cuts, like really good actions. Like a, a, a great break from like the Marvel kind of editing we've seen in fight movies now. Where it's right. like just chopped the hell and you can't tell what's going on. Like this right. is a great break for some great choreography, great creative fight scenes and really well done cinematography. But that scene goes on for so long without a single person even yelling out their car. Like, what are you doing? Like, no, nobody acknowledges their presence, occasionally breaking to not hit someone, very often just hitting them and continuing to go. The flow of traffic in this major metropolitan city is not interrupted in the slightest. You are not wrong at all. To me, I, I, again, I totally see if that's, like, if that's a flaw, if that's like a world-breaking flaw, I totally get that. To me, I at this point, I'm assuming that either... I won't say everyone, but I'm assuming most of the people in this world are aware of the underworld, you know, assassin underworld that exists because it's so public. The Continental is a huge hotel no just for know. assassins. You, there's no way you don't know. So that's why I'm like, I feel like it's much more public than we think. It's not this underworld as much as it is just that's the government almost. It's like the government of this world is just assassins. The high table might be Congress and you know, like yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the, you know, the, the elder, the guy who sits above the high table is the president. You know what I mean? It's like in my head, I kind of envision it like that to where there's public knowledge. And if you see people just shooting it up, if John Wick is just killing people with pencils, just <laughs> let him yeah. just go about your business. You're, you're not going to be able to do anything about it. That's kind of how I've envisioned it. That's how I, that's how I think about it is that everybody's just in the know of all this stuff and just doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's not, it doesn't like take me out of it. Yeah. Really, it doesn't like ruin the movie at all for me. It's really not a problem, but it's just, this one in particular is it was outrageous. The, it was the most noticeable. <laughs> they movie. blew up a huge building, just blew it up in broad daylight. And the most you see is like two lines of police tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ian McShane looking forlornly at his <laughs> hotel. Nobody else is gathered. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> I, w I do want to talk about Ian McShane's teeth. His... How they're all in business for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> his teeth look odd to me. Like, I noticed it several times. Like, the way he would say things, the way his teeth would... I'm not knocking you mean, Ian McShane. Odd, I mean, odd as in different than they used to look? I think so. Like, he had some work done I think or he something? Had, I think he had okay. some work done. And again... I did not notice that. The dude's, like, in his 70s. Go more power to him. I he's killing him. He's the death. man. He's awesome. But something's up with his teeth. I just want to say that. I don't know why, but I just wanted to say that. Um, okay, good. <laughs> Glad you got that off your chest. Did you have a problem with the runtime? <sighs> no, but okay. it was right on the line. Okay. Like that, it was so much. It was. And the, I noticed at one point I pointed it out to Nicole. There's when uh, he's going, when Ian McShane, the manager, is going to see um, the new guy, like the guy. Stirring up all this ruckus. Oh, uh, Skarsgård. Skarsgård, yeah, one of yeah, Skarsgård. Yeah. He's going to see, I can't remember the, his title on that, or what, like the magistrate or some shit uh, like that. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. 
Marquis de Gramont. The, yeah, the Marquis. Yeah, thank yeah. you. He's going to see the Marquis. Right. The it shows him, no joke, walking at normal pace, uncut, from one end of the hallway all the way to the other for no less than 12 seconds. I loved that. <laughs> I loved that I like so that. much. <laughs> I like that. I, like, I stopped for a minute. I was like, oh, cool. And you're like, you get like a sense of this grandiose palace and how over the top this Marquis is. And he's just, you know, he's just otherworldly kind of like arrogant and showy. Right, right. And like, I was like, he's still walking. <laughs> it hasn't cut. Like, I thought for sure. I leaned over to call. I was like, that's why this movie is three hours long. Yeah. Because we have shots like that of just him. And I liked it. It was a cool shot. There was great artwork behind him. And there's very methodical, calm walk down, like in the face of all this danger and everything that's going on. Like, I like that. I like the, what it created, but the movie was full of, I think, little things like that. It was like, why are we still just holding on John Wick not talking? Like, just standing yeah. still, pondering life. <laughs> like, no, you're definitely right. And that, honestly, like, I felt the same way, not to go off on a tangent, but with, uh, like, Zack Snyder's Justice League. You know, that movie was four hours go. long. We're starting a theme of the podcast already, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Episode one. <laughs> so we have theme throughout. <laughs> But with that movie, like it, it was four hours long. But you, if you cut out most of the slow mo scenes, no joke, you might be able to get that movie down to three hours. There's a real chance. There's you're a real off, solid like, chance you could cut movie. off at least conservatively a half hour with that movie. So I think to that your point, like with John Wick, like they could have easily cut down on some time. Uh, but I, I, I agree. It did, the, the the length didn't affect me at all. Granted, I was having an awesome time with this movie. But just objectively, like it didn't, it didn't feel as long as it probably should have, for a hour, yeah, no. an, a, an action movie that's two hours and forty five minutes. That's crazy. And I thought they did a really good job of differentiating the fight scenes and not making it all like, I'm not watching the same thing for three hours. Like everything, every group he was fighting with, everything felt he handled it differently. It was just diversified enough to keep you interested right and all the fight scenes and like all the talking was impactful and everybody delivered their lines with such gravitas and you know like it was it was compelling like even the little slow bits it was dialogue but like the exterior shots of shit we didn't need to see like that that ate up an inordinate amount of time yeah no that's that's totally fair that's totally fair um speaking of scars guard what'd you what'd you think of the villain in this movie i'm so glad you brought this up because i want <laughs> i wanted to where is that accent from Okay, I, what is I that? Can, it was it's so distracting. I concede fully that his accent is terrible in this. What do you? Where was he supposed to be from, or was that just a generic? I, he's supposed to be French, I think. Okay, that's kind of I got from all the architecture and like the way he dressed and everything. Else. Yeah, I was yeah. guessing French, but I didn't know. Yeah, because he's in uh, he's in Paris. Yeah, he's in, yeah for he's a in lot Paris. Of, I assume yeah yeah French, but I could. You could have given me forever to guess that just on his voice, and I never would have got that. It was it was it was a little wonky. There was one Wanda Maximov level of <laughs> <laughs> in and out of a Russian accent kind of blunder there. I don't know why he's already like a creepy guy. You don't need to give him a a foppy French accent. Just let him do his thing or tone it down a little bit. You don't. Yeah, you I agree. He didn't need that character trait. He got plenty of development. You got to see what kind of a young upstart psycho he was. We didn't need that distracting accent when it became obvious he was not awesome and he's a great actor but just right. that one accent he's not great at. i completely agree why. i completely agree i was worried going into this film that like the villain because with every john wick film you're like it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you're like okay he keeps killing all the highest people mm. how are there going to be how is there going to be anybody yeah. left but i did i actually really enjoyed the villain in this movie i enjoyed the logic of him showing up um i enjoy I just love this world of assassins. I it's such a fascinating world. And the role that Skarsgård played in this, like, felt... It made sense. It made sense why he was there. It made sense why he was doing what he was doing. And I, I loved his motivation. I loved how messed up he was. Like, I, I really enjoyed Skarsgård in this. It was fun to see a genuine psycho. Yeah. Everybody else is pretty much just a level-headed assassin kind of mobster or whatever yeah it was fun to see like a real genuine psycho with unlimited resources come at this problem that was fun and i did like that he didn't fight for himself like i kind of enjoyed that because i i was expecting the whole movie that he was going to fight john wick and i'm like mm. this is hilarious there's no way yeah, this yeah, guy is fighting john die. wick yeah. but I, I like to see that he just you know defers his battles to other people like is that that that's who he is that makes a lot yeah. of sense for his character um great suits Phenomenal fashion on this. I, what speaking of suits, yeah. was Lawrence Fishburne's 
whole job in this just to bring John Wick suits. Did he do anything else? The only two times we see him, he's bringing him a suit he, and going on a long model. Holy, he did that. He did that twice, didn't he? At least he? twice. Oh my gosh. Did he, did he do that in the third movie too? He might've. I think he did. I think he's done it in at least one other movie where he's just bringing him a suit. It's like his whole thing. That's It's hilarious. pretty great. I, did, I didn't even realize that. But he definitely does it twice. In this movie, how great is Lawrence Fishburne in this? Though Dude, that opening scene where he's walking down the hall oh. and John Wick's punching a little board over and over again, and he's just doing this big boisterous monologue to nobody in this echoey corridor for just ju- he's just doing it for hobos at this point. It was just I love that entrance. It was just I love when you let him just go all out like just be a lunatic like that. I it's, love it. It's so great. He's so phenomenal in this. That's one of my favorite aspects of the. One of, there's a lot, but one of my favorites of the John Wick world is just the sewer underworld. That's so yeah. weird. <laughs> it's so awesome. It's so opposite to like this, the regal nature of the yeah. assassin world. I, I love that. I think that's so fun and creative. I like that like everywhere you go, everybody is like a thing. Like everybody's a group that has like, yeah. nobody's just like a business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a street. You know, like everybody is in this thing in one way or another, is aware of the Assassin's Guild or whatever you call it, like, or has a weird homeless enclave that just uh, performs unknown tasks and has equipment and just, and trains that go to nowhere. It's just, it's baffling and I love it. Yeah, it's phenomenal. One thing I did really like, um, when you were talking about that, I was thinking of like the second movie and the tailor in that movie who fitted John Wick with his first bulletproof suit. One thing I really liked is the progression of the technology in these movies in the sense that in the second movie, John Wick gets a bulletproof suit and mm. he's the only one who has one. Mm. And then in the third movie, a couple more people have bulletproof suits. Yeah. And then there's that whole, was it the third one that big fight scene where like all the guys come in to the hotel in the full yes. like body armor, like top to bottom bulletproof thing. You yes. gotta, like shoot him in the neck a bunch. Got yeah. to see return of that in this. That again, was which so, I never get tired of. Oh, I love that's that. so great. I love, I love that. But I love the progression of the world and just like the consequences of these suits being on the market. Now everybody has yeah, them. Yeah, it's yeah. not just John Wick. Everybody has them. But yeah, the neck shots. Oh my gosh, that was just phenomenal. <laughs> there, all right, so there's one scene in the, uh, I think it was Kyoto or was it Tokyo? Uh, the it a soap? It's not Soka. That's a Star Wars. Yeah, it's a Soka. Uh, it's a Soka. Uh, <laughs> Soka um, Osaka. 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 You were close. Like making, you. making fun of me. You know, it's <laughs> right on there. Osaka. The Osaka Continental. Like that whole fight scene. Like he gets in there and there's he's dealing with two of them back and forth. Right. And the one guy is like pinned up against this big drum. Oh. For a minute. And he just like keeps shooting him once and the guy just like does this big prat fall onto the drum over and over and over again yeah. while he's fighting this one other guy. It's just, like it, that was another one. That that extra, I don't know what they told him to do, that like <laughs> stunt guy. But they're like, act like you're dying ten times in a row. And he's like, You got it. And he just, <laughs> just falling against that drum over and over again. The commitment, I uh, hilarious. Just so over the top, so stupid. It's so funny that like I just I got the opposite experience from this movie than you did. Like pretty much in every way. Like I loved that. I loved like the way he would pin him up with like the bullets and that guy was just getting flown back and like pretty much everything, like everything that was a negative for you for some reason was like a positive for me in this movie. I just really, really liked that. But I get what you're saying and I don't know why it's not a negative for me. That's what's, that's why like I wanted to discuss this so much because I was so confused as to why you didn't like it and I did like it. We almost I almost universally agree on, yeah. on movies for the most part. Like, yeah, especially stuff like this. Yeah. I'm so confused why we don't align on this and why you're wrong. It's unfortunate. <laughs> no, uh, but... I, I definitely I get what you're saying. I just did not experience that. Um, okay, I want. Let, okay, we've dwelled on the negative. What did you enjoy about this movie? What are some things you loved about it? I'm trying to think because I want to. I kind of want to go in order because I want to keep all like the little things separate. Right. Um, I like watching John Wick run through all his friends. <laughs> accidentally, like not in like a, a morbid kind. Of, I, I just like like he is exhausting. Yeah. And for like, and this is it. Like, he has no one else. Everybody hates him. Even his friends are not crazy about helping him. But like, the Osaka Continental guy, 
is that the only Asian actor? He, if there's a Japanese person in a movie, like there's a couple Japanese people in a movie that, that got leader of that kind of, his name escapes me and that kills me. I get, I'm going to look it up actually while we're, while we're through this, but he, I love, he's in, he's the only Japanese actor is what I was trying to get at. I really no, sure in, in, I in the, uh, in John Wick 3, they had the guy from Iron Chef, so checkmate. I'm not, <laughs> that, 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 that sounded like I was doing a joke. I was not joking. There was the, right? Am I crazy? Oh, now I got to Google this. Hold on. Oh, that's fine. This is why, that's how we can edit this out. Uh, John Wick 3, Parabellum. That is, that is a legitimate complaint against the John Wick franchise that they gave Chapter 3 a subtitle when none of the other chapters have a subtitle. That bugs me to why, death. Why would you do that? And don't, per, don't expect me to be smart enough to know what parabellum means. I don't know what parabellum means. And that <laughs> makes me, it makes me feel stupid and I'm not, not going to look it up. I'm not coming to a John Wick movie to look up vocab words. All right, buddy? Hiroyuko. Oh, that was so bad. Hiroyuki Sonata. Dang, he looks young in that picture. Yeah, That's no, they crazy. got like a. I don't know why they got that one, but he was. I just watched Bullet Train the other day. So Same good. exact character. Yeah, he Same really exact is. Exact character in that isn't in this. I don't want to get off on a tangent. What do you think of Bullet Train? Uh, mm, it took me a minute to adjust to the tone of the movie because I didn't know. I didn't really see any trailers for it. I just saw Brad Pitt was in it and I wanted to <laughs> off. So I was like, I want to watch Bullet Train. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I I went into it not really knowing what the tone was going to be, and it was way sillier. It is. A, it's a silly, it, fun movie. Yeah. And it made it hard to like switch into this. I couldn't tell when they were trying to be serious and when it was supposed to be funny, and the characters were serious, but the audience is supposed to think it was funny. But wait, once I kind of got the sense of it, I was like, I I really enjoyed it. It's a fun little like kind of guy Ritchie feels like kind of romp around. I I liked it. Yeah, I would definitely rewatch it again in the future because. I, I liked it in the pretty much the exact same way on the first time and then on the second watch I really loved it because I knew what to expect and I had so much more fun with it the second time so I would definitely give it another watch at some point Mark DeCascos uh, De yeah Mark DeCascos yeah, yeah yeah Iron Chef America yeah I forgot I forgot he was Iron Chef yeah I, I, loved, I loved his character he was great like, he was the same kind of like he was like you could tell he's a little bit unhinged like he likes this a little bit more than everyone else right does kind of like the new Talking Skarsgård brother, whichever one, Bill maybe. Bill, Bill, Sweet. got that one. Okay, where, what were we saying? Um, talking about things we like. Yeah, and like the way, so yeah, like he's running through all his friends, like just popping up in these various little locations, like just for like a brief moment of of refuge, and like he's got to do all these extra things for him, and he's like honor bound by all this. Like same in the other movies, like all this right. talk of like the code of honor and all that kind of stuff. It continues through this. It's still not hacky. I still enjoy it very much i got on, one more thing yeah in that scene, i could talk about just the kyoto thing for an hour or the osaka continental scene for like an hour oh, we didn't even talk all right hold on <laughs> <laughs> at one point when um the manager of that one's daughter comes out and talks to john yes okay he's yeah. standing out there in the garden looking at like the lilies or like looking at the you know blossoms the cherry blossom tree, yeah, the cherry yeah. Blossom yeah. yeah 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 that. he's standing out there and like he gives him his yeah like a little line deliver right. and then like she's like they're they're here like it's time to go you got to help us now like you started this shit you got to help us right do you have a gun yeah and he doesn't answer he just goes pulls up a gun like right up to his face like that like it's just the goofiest little move he didn't pull it out slow like show you he didn't like do a calm like you know pull it out you know chamber around something like that right he just like huh, like right <laughs> it was so shocking to see because like he, he's so methodical until he gets into a fight and then he's all business and fast and, you know, but like everything else, he's very controlled, very methodical. So that little like shift from him being <laughs> so somber and thinking about what he's doing and what his plan is to just <clears throat> like bringing the gun. It was just it was something about it. Like I, I giggled out loud when and I saw that. <laughs> I get that. Again, another point of total disagreement. I just loved that. I, know, I didn't, I I didn't hate it, it but it made awesome. me giggle when it, I don't think they wanted me to. It was, it was, it was a little, it was funny. <laughs> But I liked, obviously, the choreography is fun. I love the nunchucks and that one. Oh, oh the nunchucks. All right. Our blind friend. Yes. What did you think about him? Ooh. I've got I've got some thoughts, but. I, he was pretty much. It, is that actor actually blind? Because that's not. the second time he's played a blind fighter. Is it really? He was the blind guy in Rogue One. 
Oh my gosh, that's he right. He was a blind, like, the, you know, prophetic, like, force guy. Oh, he was great in, in that. One. I totally forgot that was he, him. So he's not actually blind. Not he, that They I'm just aware of. keep making him do this. <laughs> he has cornered the market on Asian blind guys, yeah, that's what? for sure. I mean, dude, find your niche. Man. That guy, but I, he has nailed it. I loved him in it. I thought he was phenomenal. I loved his character. I thought, I loved the connection between him and John. Again, I just, I, I thought it was phenomenal. You know, few words, but... The, the words that he had were great, and I loved the communication with him and John. I just thought it was great. I liked him. I think he was my favorite, but just above the tracker, the guy with the dog, I, I loved that character. I liked too. him a lot. I would, I I would watch, him a lot. I would watch movies for any of these side it, characters. It definitely felt like they would maybe be setting him up for like kind of spin off. I would be totally stuff fine with or that. whatever, like because they gave him such a backstory, like or like like they gave him so much time, and there's all these other characters, like this one new guy yeah. who has no connection to anyone else gets an inordinate amount of screen time, I mean, not in a bad way. I enjoyed every second of it. No, yeah, but like, like they're definitely like they liked him. They wanted him to like <clears throat> potentially be in you know some HBO spinoff series or something like that at some point. He's for sure like. He's he's gonna do something else in the John Wick universe. I'm I'm calling it now. That would be great. They love they love that guy, and I like I like him too, man. I thought he was great. Did you know there's a? Did you hear there's a uh, a show coming out? I think it's on. I want to say Amazon. It might be Paramount. I'm not sure honestly, but there's a show with uh, Ana de Armas called Ballerina, and she's gonna be. I have gonna I be have in heard the of John Wick world. Yeah. Oh, okay. I did not know she was gonna be in that. I, yeah, she's I heard gonna be like the lead in it. That, all right, so. The blind thing, like, got a little to go back to that real quick. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It got a little. I loved like the way he would fight. Like, it was kind of like it was like watching Charlie Cox in in Daredevil. You know, like the way he would like never really look at you because he's always like he doesn't need to. Right. He's like always pointing his ear at you a little bit. He's kind of like looking down or away from everybody. Like his blind acting was phenomenal. Like you really like you never caught him looking at people. And even in the fight scenes, his head was turned. Yeah. And he's listening the whole time. I thought he like. Phenomenal choreography, phenomenal performance from again an actor whose name escapes me, from Rogue One blind guy. Right, Donnie. Yes, thank yes. you. Phenomenal. I love the little when he's going in the kitchen and putting up the little doorbell things. Oh, that was so He's just great. like feeling out the vibe. He's like, all right, putting it here, putting it here. Like, great. He just sits down and waits. Yeah, he eats for the ones to go off. He eats, eats him some soup. <laughs> he gets a little soup. <laughs> he has a quick soup break and then back to kill it. I like that he didn't. He liked the Asian guys. He didn't kill any of the Asian guys. Did you notice that he kills everybody else? He only knocks out. He he only knocks out like the other Os, um, Osaka employees. What? I don't. I don't think he kills any of them. I did not notice that. That's awesome. Like, because he like you could tell him and the the manager of that that hotel had like a little bit of a right. history. They really knew each other. And I think he showed that respect. He did not. He only knocked out or like incapacitated everybody else. I didn't notice I think. that. Big, if true. <laughs> <laughs> All Asians know each other. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I like I like that fight. I like the closing. I thought it was really sad the way the manager of that one went down. That was that was a bummer. But it was cool to see how proficient he was with the sword and all that kind of stuff. And I really that, that was probably my the big set piece that I enjoyed the most. There's yeah. one other moment, things we enjoy, that I liked the most. I think I know what you're about to say. The top down. Oh yeah. Like Call of Duty working his way through. Oh. The thing with the fire, dragon's breath round shotgun, just cleaning house. That one was so unique and so well like that. Nothing else looks like that. Nothing. That looked so good. That was so cool. It was so creative. Be able to track everybody, see like the way he reacts to things in real time, like all the space around him, like how aware he is of his surroundings. It was so, so unique. It was so, I love that scene. That got me back in. That may be one of the best action scenes ever. It was, like you said, it was the most creative thing I've probably ever seen. It was handled so smoothly and so well. I mean, in terms of one take, I don't know if you, I mean, Daredevil, that one take hallway fight might be, or stairwell fight might be up there. But and in terms that's of, great. But like the way this is shot just makes it such a unique sense of yeah. where everybody is in the fight. And you get like, you know, it's not just like NPCs spawning in the doors and running out. You get to see them like working their way through the rooms and like, like real other enemies with agency and like they're checking corners and coming through and he's just taking them out 
one by one, just burning them up. All of it. it was so good. I love that scene. That was, yeah, that was some of the best things. As soon as I saw the bad guys whip out a dragon breath shotgun, I was like, oh, I can't wait for John to immediately yeah. take that <laughs> and use it against them. That's going to be so good. I'm trying to think what else. Talked about oh. back, backpack dog guy. Oh, oh yeah. the stairwell scene the stairwell fights not oh, stairwell the, the staircase the big, yeah the, the big staircase sta oh my god that was exhausting that that felt like it was half the movie <laughs> <laughs> that went on for all right the at one point our his blind friend comes to help him out yes and he's got that pencil in his pocket from earlier yes and i when i first saw that pencil and they really made sure you saw it, the way that scene was shot when he first puts it in his pocket i was like right John Wick's gonna kill somebody with that in my head. I just knew if something was gonna happen, we finally get to see in the final one this famous pencil killing thing we heard about in the first fucking movie that made him famous. So and they blue balled us with that. He didn't get the kill anybody. But I was so pissed when that didn't come through to fruition. So I I totally get that. So actually, in John Wick two, he kills a guy with a pencil. It's during it's the, at the end of the movie mm. when all when everybody's mm. like hunting after him. And all mm. everybody, everybody's like hunting da him down. Um, I know that's like all of the third movie as well as the fourth movie, but <laughs> for a portion of the second movie, everybody's hunting after him, and he kills guy with a pencil. Okay, and it's pretty great. So I agree. I was waiting for the exact same thing, but I'm not as mad because we did yeah. see it in another right. one. That's that's um, fair. But still, I was like, you can't, you can't give the let the other guy get the pencil kill. That that's not that that's not a, fair. That was a good that was a good a good pencil kill <laughs> yeah. though. But yeah, that that's the staircase scene was. Again, I, I loved every second of it. Just like the dragon breath scene, like I, I, I didn't want it to end. I wanted to just keep <laughs> experiencing it, but it was a long scene. It was a very yeah. long scene, but it's still like, it felt unique and it felt exhausting. And when he got knocked down the hill, oh. I, I, I just, I felt a gasp from myself and everyone else around me. I'm just, You're oh like, my oh, God. Are you shitting me? <laughs> oh no. And that's, that's just one thing I loved about this is like, I felt the energy in the theater of just everyone having a good time. Everybody was just having fun. Everybody was reacting to what was happening on screen. They would just like, you can feel people smiling when Keanu would just say, yeah. <laughs> it was just great. It was just fun. It was hilarious. It was action packed. Um, yeah, I, I just had a great time with this. The, uh, I, no, all right, so you're right. That, that staircase fight was, when he got knocked back down there, in my head, I was like, I was trying to think of any way for him to get up there and not have to do all that again. Like, am I like, I was like, please, just, I can't watch it again. <laughs> like, I can't watch the exact same fight scene twice in a row, but it was still fresh and fun. Like, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like, it was more just like that one big guy, kind of like the, the Italian or like Spanish yeah. guy coming through. Like, so I made it a little, I changed it up a little bit and he had a buddy helping him out the second time. So I was like, all right, cool. This will be a little, this will be something. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. I, I completely agree. I love, they, it's like they knew when it was getting too long, right? Yeah. When you were starting to feel the strenuousness and you're, you're like, like oh, I'm, I'm boy. physically tired watching yeah. it through this now. <laughs> Boom, Donnie Yen comes yeah. in and you're like, yes. There we I'm, go. I'm ready. I'm ready for more. Um, I, side note, I loved the way Donnie Yen would like stab people. It was just like such quick little like, yeah, it's just stabs. Like, like, he's just like swinging the sword, like just wild. And then like he would just like, boop, like one quick little thing in yeah. there. It was, I love that. Like his, it was a really, really unique sword fighting choreography in that. That's for, from him in particular. That's another thing I wanted to mention is that I loved the choreography for each person. Every single person in this movie fights differently. Mm -hmm. Nobody fight nobody's just fighting like John Wick because they're in a John Wick movie. It's like mm -hmm. John Wick fights like John Wick. Donnie Yen fights like Donnie Yen. The mm -hmm. tracker fights like the tracker. Mm -hmm. Like everybody has their own unique way of fighting. I think they could so easily not do that. They could and so just, easily the same just, choreographer just do, like hey do copy paste same moves for everybody. Yeah, I know you're right. I think that was oh all right fight moves. Yes, I want to talk the uh, the weird Bond villain casino guy with the gold teeth. Oh my the, gosh, the, the the penguin. <laughs> I think Scott Adkins. I think is the actor's name. Yeah, uh, I, I meant to send you this the other day. He might be a good Batman. Honestly, I thought because I saw a picture of him, like outside of the fat suit and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like, not bad. I I, I buy that. Acrobatic. I don't he mind can it. Fight. He had a great fighting scene. Anyway, when he did that first high kick, 
And I didn't realize that that was a guy in a fat suit. That was a really good makeup. Like, <laughs> it I, was like good. I like that discount Bond villain look and yeah. just his weird manner of speaking, his big stupid gun, his <laughs> desk is a poker table. It was such, like, if they had been another Bond movie, he would have been doing big high kicks yeah. at Daniel Craig, but instead he's in John Wick because they didn't make another one. But like he, straight rip off, lock jaw, whatever, you know, notable facial deformity Bond villain. Right. But uh, that whole scene was crazy. I loved, I loved that one to see somebody like John Wick just couldn't beat up like normal. Because even the big bruiser, like the Spanish guy, you know, he's running his own little crew, was coming after him the whole time. Like, like he was a big bruiser, but John could kind of fight him the same as everybody else. Yeah. For the most part. Like seeing him like have to deal with someone who's just so big and imposing and so strong and like he's not faster than John, he's not whatever, but like, he can still fight and he you can't move him. You can't flip yeah. him, you can't do all this kind of stuff. Like that was a really fun see, I, I loved watching him just like run through the like waddle through the crowd and try to like <laughs> just try to get away from him and then like sneak up behind him and get throw a big haymaker or a big the goofy high kick. That was awesome. And and to a point you were making earlier, like that was probably the biggest uh example of the audience or the mem the people in the world not caring about what was going on was in that nightclub scene when like people were shooting guns, stabbing people, doing all Nobody stuff. Nobody stopped no dancing, they would just they just knew they had a sixth sense like bees. They were just dancing and they would just kind of scooch away just enough to let the action go unimpeded. Nobody got, you know, nobody took a bullet. Nobody was used as a human shield. Nobody got a, caught a stray hatchet to the face. Everybody just kept on dancing. It was wild to watch. And, you know, I want to go back. It's on my watch list to go back and see one and two, John, John Wick one and two, because I want to see the nightclub scene in the first John Wick to see how people reacted then. Well, it, so I remember that one. Okay. I love, I've watched John Wick <laughs> one the most probably. So good. But like, you know, like in the bath scene, the bathhouse scene clears yeah. out That's right away. As soon as it starts, it clears out and it's just like the goons in there. That scene is so good. And then like in the nightclub, it's pretty quiet until it starts to like pick up. Like he's just kind of like taking out guys for a second, like in the crowd, like he's walking through grass kind of, if I remember oh, Okay, right. you're right. And he's, I not, think... like, he's not like in the crowd shooting yeah. as much. Like he's taking him down to the floor and like popping him. Or whatever. And then, like, it gets a little more loud, and, like, they kind of get away from the crowd. Yeah. More, but for the most part, he's not, like, as egregiously just, like, raising hell through a crowd of people that are just not acknowledging his presence at all. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Again, like, to me, like, none of that is an issue, because I just chalk it up to, this is the world. That's just how it is. That's just yeah. how it is. But I, I totally I totally get if that's, like, if that's just weird. Um, but, yeah, I loved the role of this this mob boss villain in this again like not to get on a tangent but i feel like it's stuff like this that make doing james bond so difficult nowadays mm -hmm. in this movie in john way Ford, like you have a better bond villain than bond movies have this this the guy at the poker table was like the best version of blofeld the best version of jaws best version of odd job like he had all yeah, these yeah, weird, yeah, yeah. he had all these weird things piled into one and he just felt great it was awesome and his i little golden inhaler uh, and his big stupid gun all that. <laughs> it was hilarious. so great and that that was better than any of the bond villains in the previous bond films and i love those movies but i just think it's difficult it's not just for bond movies anymore i think like when these movies like I don't know. It's just difficult for Bond films to stand out when you've got John Wick, when you've got Mission Impossible. You've got high caliber action films mm. that are just dunking on you at what you used to do best. Yeah. I think it's difficult for these Bond films to, to keep up, which that's why I'm so interested to see where they go with the next Bond films because I, I, they got to do something completely different. And last yeah. last thing I heard is that Phoebe Waller-Bridge might be coming in to write the script, which I love that. She okay. wrote the script for No Time to Die. Also, okay. Yeah, also, yeah. also, she did the show Fleabag, which I love. I, I never did see it. Everybody kept telling me to watch Fleabag. I love that show. I Personally, I like it. It's like Louis, but British and with a woman. And I honestly like that show better than Louis at a lot of times. Really? Which okay. is a bit, okay, okay. I haven't seen Louis in a while, hot though. Take. I haven't seen Louis in a ring, while. Ring the hot take bell. That get was... the bell. We need to get one. <laughs> but I, I, I love that. Anyway, that's a complete complete tangent but yeah love scotty adkins is the villain there he's phenomenal so last thing to highlight would be the ending okay first of all the duel i love that so dramatic love it so i was just, here for it yeah it's so old west old timey oh. spaghetti western the music oh. the cinematography the lighting was all so old school duel at noon kind of thing 
absolutely love this. So phenomenal. And one other, one other thing too is I, I felt the relationship between Winston and John in this movie was the best we had ever gotten. Mm. Just their their dynamic was I just was eating it up. It was so fun mm. to watch their their banter back and forth. Like the I'll just have fun out there. Like yeah, that, that, was, that was awesome. Yeah, that was hilarious. Like so good. I just loved everything between them. Um, I thought it was great. But the the final duel was so much fun. I, I love that western as like you said the duel spaghetti western. It just it it felt so fitting to end it that mm. way, and it was so tense too because I I genuinely didn't know who was gonna make it. I did not know. I didn't expect John Wick to die, but I didn't know. Yeah. Like, I had no clue. It could have gone either way. It felt like it had the, like, even from the start of that scene, like, it felt like if they were going to kill him, this would be how they do it. Yeah. This is big enough. Like, this is, you know, emotionally impactful enough going up against somebody who's, you know, yeah. a colleague who's got his own stuff on the line, who doesn't, you know, like, them not knowing, like, what do I do here? Like, do I let him get me? Do I kill him? Like, what? how do I handle this like without saying it right like just that you could see them like thinking it and like fighting their own battles and trying to like you know have respect for this guy that like they've known for a long time and dealing with their own so it was so i love it it was so well done yeah it was just you could like you said you could just see on their faces they were just moving chess pieces just trying to figure out what to do how to handle that situation but yeah, I, I loved that clancy brown i do i was about to say clancy brown was in this so movie good. did you know <laughs> amazing so great he's a he's phenomenal i wish he was in more things he's so know, great always the voice actor never really get to see him on screen much so it was nice to see him just as a weird macabre kind of delivery man and game show host for this i love i love this character but he was great so the last thing would be the death of john wick what did you think of that did you like that did you not like that did you expect it i got a little hint when he said they're having it was him and Lawrence Fishburne and Ian McShane on that boat coming out and he said like loving husband I want loving husband on mine it was like the oh. first like full sentence he had put together the whole movie yeah. I was like oh Got shit he said three words <laughs> yeah I was like oh no <laughs> none he of said them a whole were, sentence <laughs> and none of them were yeah dude like that's that's good like that's they wanted us to hear that and no like uh, like when I heard that I was like oh buddy like he's really getting like he's been beaten down like the last three movies feels like he hasn't had a break. Right. You know, like this, this is coming to an end. Like this has to stop at some point. They're not just going to keep having him live out this like day to day hellish existence of having everybody in the world try to kill you. Yeah. But, and so I felt, I was like, this, this is going to be wrapping up a yeah. little bit here. I feel like in my, and then like just the way that scene was said, I was like, he's not, yeah, he's not making it out of this. I don't think, but I like, I like that he did get to like get the last shot on Skarsgård. It's so good. <laughs> I, love it. I love to eat McShane's like peanut gallery comment. It's like, you idiot. Yeah. He didn't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> they just rolled over and it. I love that. That was so, I love, again, I just, their dynamic is hilarious. It's fantastic. But yeah, no, that was, that was rough. It was rough. Like, I agree. It's like you, you started to feel like anyone could go when he said that. Mm -hmm. But in my head, I was just like, no, there's no way they kill John Wick. There's just no way you These do movies that. are way too popular. Everybody That's, loves this character. They're going to keep going. I just didn't think this, even the studio would allow that. So that, yeah. props to them for even doing that. I mean, that's that's mm. huge. I mean, John Wick is the height of his popularity, making more, it made more than Shazam 2. Did you know that? That's crazy. I believe it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's the next one. That's the next one. I want to watch. I'm hoping so bad if I get to see Shazam 2 soon that we can watch it and I hope I love it. Dude, I just to art just to like I, I want to argue yeah. with people like but like I know I'm going I know I'm going to hate it. I hated the first one, I'm going to hate this one. Yeah, so as I make fun of Shazam there, it's like I'm making fun cuz I love that movie. I really I loved Shazam 2. I had a blast with it. I went back and rewatched the first one. Loved it even more. Like I didn't like it the first time I watched it, loved it the second time. Um but yeah, we'll have to watch that one and talk about that cuz there's a lot to say about that. But yeah, no, I thought there was no there's no shot. Bold. Like like like, I didn't go into the movie thinking he was going to die, but, like, it became more and more evident as it went on. I was like, there, there's a good chance that he's he's going to bite it right here. But I'm excited. I, I don't feel... I, I'm glad they killed him off when they did and in the way that they did. It just feels so respectful to the character mm -hmm. that they created that shouldn't have been as great as it was. I mean, yeah. I remember going to see John Wick in theaters when it came out. Um, I was like, I, this is going to be ridiculous. Yeah, I went with my mom and we just went on an off chance. We just like went on a random day, went to go see this movie and we're like, eh, let's just go check it out. 
and I remember just walking out of the theater just blown away with what I saw. Mm. Like, I couldn't believe it. I remember the, the moment John Wick tackled his first opponent and started shooting up the house. And yeah. Was just going, I was just like, what is this? Like, what am I watching? <laughs> this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, like that, like, gung, that gun food thing. Like, the first time you saw that oh. was just so... Yeah, I... You immediately, for, you're like, this is good. You forget that that... I mean, I'm not going to say they invented it in this movie, but at least for at least American audiences, and at least for me, and I think a lot of people, it's like, this was our introduction to that. Like, we had never seen anything like that before mm. until we saw this movie. And so I, I just think letting letting the character rest, stopping it before it goes bad is such a smart move, and I love that they did that. And I'm excited, I, but I, just as though John Wick is, even though John Wick's dead, I don't feel the universe is dead. I feel like it's more alive than ever before. Mm. And I, I mean... We just got introduced to a whole new batch of characters. There's a, a whole world out there of characters. Like all the characters he interacted in, interacted with in the other movies are still alive. Mm -hmm. So we've got four movies where the characters we can still interact with and see, mm -hmm. you know, in spinoff movies or shows. So I, I, even though John Wick is dead, like I feel like the, the, there's more potential than ever to do more with the John Wick world. I would love to see like a dirty, like Lawrence Fishburne and dog backpack guy like he kind of like because he kind of like he looks like he wants to blend in, in yeah you know he wants to blend in look a little disheveled he doesn't want to stand out he's not dressed as nice as everyone else like you know he looks just like a backpacker or whatever like i would like to see them kind of like that would be cool. team up a little bit for a movie and kind of like a dirty underground version of what we've been getting and like i, I think that would be a fun spinoff show or movie or that whatever would be really cool what about like a mean streets style 70s like thriller drama with young Winston and young Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, hey, I, I like that. That'd I like, be pretty cool. I would like that like a lot. Them, them rising to power in the ranks yeah. in opposite directions, you know, like <laughs> one like going up in the corporate world or like, you know, the continental world and the other literally retreating into the sewers. Like, <laughs> Divorce for rings and coins. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's just so much you could do. This is the, uh, to my knowledge, like one of the richest movie universes that's just, you could just mine for gold for days, I feel like. I think, that, like, to your point, like, talking about how this makes it hard for Bond movies to really get off the ground now. Like, at the end of every Bond movie, you get the sense that, like, it's done. He retires to an island. Yeah. He goes, bangs a bunch of, like, you know, whoever, just gets drunk. Like, all his wo woes are forgotten. He's yeah. done all his going rogue. is done, and he's, he's retired. Yeah. And then something like one new guy comes out, and it's like, I've known you since I, we were boys. And they get back into it. But like this one, it just like the world feels like it's always – it's not stopping and going with every movie. It's like, okay, so this is like – there's a real hustle and bustle. There's like things happening all the time, like new people coming up and down. Everybody's such a color, colorful cast of characters yeah. all the time. Like I think it would be a great – like, that's why these movies flow up well, so well. Because it's not just like, you know, this is the bad guy for this movie, and then he's done, and then there's nothing else to worry about. They did a great job of, like, keeping the story going, keeping the momentum build up from movie to movie. Yeah. I thought that was great. That's something the Bond movies just cannot and ha really have not done. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think, again, just, like, the world... Like, these were John, this, th these were John Wick's movies, but the world always felt bigger than him, and you always kind of knew that the world was bigger than him. It didn't start and stop with John Wick. You know, there was mm -hmm. never that feeling. Maybe a little bit in the first one, but once you got into the second and third movie, like, it was the it was the world and John Wick was in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it, even you remove him from that, it's very easy to continue that. Um, and yeah, they definitely don't, have not put themselves in a box. They can really go wherever they want. I, I, I can't wait to see what they do. I have no idea what direction they're going to go in. I mean, they're already making the TV show with Ana de Armas and I'm super stoked with that because she was amazing in uh, No Time to Die the latest mm -hmm. Bond film shoot mm -hmm. I loved her character in that so I'm, I'm really excited to see what they do with this but yeah I, I get like overall I get all your gripes I do understand your gripes like on paper I would probably agree with you normally but for, for the life of me I cannot figure out why I just I don't agree with you I had the exact opposite experience <laughs> and it's so funny to me because I feel like we would be aligned on this but yeah, I, just, I, I would have thought so too, but that's, I mean, I did enjoy it, but the least out of all the other ones. That's, I think crazy. maybe, maybe I maybe like this one more than three. Yeah. I didn't love three. I, I think I maybe like this one more. Yeah. The problems weren't as glaring, but I think just overall, this is more entertaining, more just everybody. I, I don't know. Everybody's really committed in this. One. I, I really yeah. like this movie. Yeah. But I had a lot of, a lot of problems. <laughs> 
That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I, def- I definitely get it. I definitely get it. So we'll figure out how we end these things as we go <laughs> along. But uh, do we want to do like a, like a rating? Yeah, let's just do like a... One to one hundred. Uh, let's keep it. Uh, let's keep it letterboxy. Let's go like five out of five. Okay. So oh okay right, right, right. you know so out of five I would give it five. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! First movie of the box. First. There's nowhere to go from here. It's done. That's as good as it gets, folks. That's. <laughs> you blew your wad too early there, buddy. <laughs> so five out of five for me. I would give it, I do want to go back and watch it again without a raucous group of 40 year olds in front of me. I think that would help. Like thinking like the whole time I might get into a fight with these (laughs) drunk idiots. What if I fell down walking to the bathroom, like in the middle of the movie, he stood up, walked down the aisle, nobody in the way, completely empty row after he got past his buddy, walked down the aisle and just fell on his face. And then just stood up and kept going. But, yeah, if I didn't have that crew around me, I might have enjoyed it more. But I don't, I don't know. I think those problems are still there. I just might have looked past them. I might yeah. have been the day. I mean, like, yeah. being being a little uh, really critical, I mean, I'll still give it, like, 3.5. Okay. I think that's fair. So, still, I liked a lot of it. Yeah. A lot of creative things. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of people getting hit by cars. A lot of people getting hit by cars. That was lot, fun. I yeah, like that. That was good. <laughs> um, a lot of dogs bite. A lot of dog, a lot of dick chewing. Yeah. A lot of dick chewing in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a thought the other day if John Wick hadn't died and like, but he settles this thing and like, they don't know where to go from here. Right. I, I want something, a smaller scale story with him. I want, this is the silly thought I had. Okay. Earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to see John, like he's retired, like he's cool now, like he's calmed down. He gets to hang out with that dog and we didn't see in this movie until right at the very end of his grave. Sad. But I want to see him like just out at a mall somewhere and he he bumps into a way overly enthusiastic security guard. Hear me out. Played by Tom Cruise. I want another aging celebrity action star there with him. And he just takes his job way too seriously and John Wick like accidentally walks out or maybe he's like in a hurry to do something. He's so used to just taking whatever he wants. Right. Well, not noticing. Walks out with a pair of sunglasses on his head. Or yeah. Well, he you know, just, just he's like, so used to like, you know, maybe like he, you know, he cut himself or when he's running in to grab like something. Right. Or what, like just, you know, he's so used to just taking stuff and nobody noticing. Right. But like this, like Tom Cruise might be the only person in the world who notices what's going on and isn't cool that he's a very intense security guard at this place. And it goes on this long tangent fight of like him trying to go get, John Wick and bring him down for this, but he's just way over. Like he's trying, like he's fighting with John Wick. He's just as good as John Wick, but it just ends up being like he's like John Wick is just so confused. Like who the f- is this guy? What is happening? <laughs> he's that like he's calling up all his buddies. He's talking to Winston. He's like, do we know who this guy is? Like, is he another assassin? Like, is there a bounty? And he's like, no, there's not. Like, this is just this guy. Hey, and uh, couldn't help but notice you uh, walked out of here with that in your pocket. You didn't pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to need you to pay for it. Be seeing you. And he just walks out the door and Tom Cruise, they just start, they just start, the whole thing is just being chased by tiny Tom Cruise in a mall security outfit, the whole movie, same level of action, but it's just being hunted down by this lunatic mall cop. That's where I think it needs to go sillier and it needs to go smaller scale for the next one. That's what I would have done had John Wick stayed alive. I, I'm pitching it right now, Hollywood. I'm coming for you. I'm that's that's my pitch. Hire me right now. I'm executive producer. I love that. In a funny way, but also in a serious <laughs> way, Keanu Reeves and Tom Cruise need to be in a movie together. Aging action stars, like, beloved, like we'll always go see them. Like, oh, my big gosh. Big box office draws. Like, why not? Yeah. They would, that would be the great... That would be the movie to end all movies. Oh, Keanu could be, like, the villain in, like, the, <laughs> one of the next, like, Mission Impossible movies. I think they already finished filming the last two, but, like, oh, that would have been great. I would love to see that. Talk on three. He could be. Like, <laughs> he's the, he'll, be he's the, a, he'll be the plane. <laughs> <laughs> he'll voice the plane. <laughs> but no, that's an amazing idea. Yeah, I don't know. I Is thought, that, that could be like, like Mall Cop 3 or yeah, something Mall maybe. <laughs> Bring Kevin James back. <laughs> All good ideas. Okay, so five out of five. Three out of five. Respectable. Yeah, I man. appreciate that. I think I'm bad. 
You have to. I want to. I want to get your rank of the other ones at some point. Yeah, we'll go. I'd be curious to know what you think of the other ones and where it ranks. So we got we got done recording, and then we realized. Yeah, a big oops. Yeah, we left out a very, very important person out of this movie that definitely needs to be talked to, talked about anyway, at least a little bit. Yeah. And here, we forgot to mention that Lance Reddick was in this movie. Yeah. And talk about him at all. One of the best, easily the best parts of any of these John Wick movies, it was him. Oh, yeah. He was, he was amazing in every single one of them. And it's just, it's, it, it, it fucking sucks. I mean, just, it I mean, seems just, like, by all accounts, like, just an incredibly nice yeah. guy. Like, you never heard anything bad about him, never, like, you know. He's not beating up anybody in the streets. He's not being creepy. He's just a genuinely nice guy, a phenomenal character actor. You just get, you love seeing whenever he's in stuff. Like, I think think probably for most people, he's like, oh, it's the, it's that guy from, they have like one thing they know him from. Right, right. And you just like, you see like, oh, I like seeing that guy and stuff. But like, Lance Reddick is just phenomenal. I like him in everything. I loved him in Destiny. I loved him in Fringe. Loved him in that one episode of Sunny he's in. Like just, just, I love him to death, man. That's that's such a hard thing. He's not that old either. No, he was young. Was he 50s? Late fifties, late fifties. Yeah, I mean, he was young. That was awful, but yeah, he was amazing in all of these movies. And the little bit he was in four, he was amazing in it. So that's just it's a huge loss. So I love. I got. I just I thought about it the other day when he <laughs> in three. I think it's three when all the or maybe it's two when all those like armored guys come into the Continental, like with all like the full blackout like body armor stuff, and John Wick has to keep. Going back, <laughs> going back to Lance Reddick's character yes. in the basement. I mean, like, I need more firepower. And he's like, try this one. Yeah. He's just like a little merchant in a video game. It's just I a love shop. Like, I he's love like, that. I'm here to upgrade your weapons and <laughs> make sure you can take on the new boss or whatever. It's just so hilarious. Funny. Yeah, his role in these movies, it's, it's often small. But, man, it's just like, just like with Winston and Ian McShane. Like, he just brings so much. Just, he just... You can't have these movies without him. Yeah, it's, it's those it's those smaller roles that really yeah. fill out that world and make an otherwise pretty bleak and dour situation. Like gives you like a little bit of like light. Yeah. And then whether or not he's like being you know funny or whatever, like he's just pleasant to see on screen. He's just a nice person to be around for a little bit in these movies. A nice break from the yeah. horror that you're around all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So rest in peace to a legend for sure. You missed. Right,